Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a few minutes this morning to be the church together. Today I offer you today's lectionary reading, the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli the priest. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Here ends the reading. Today's story is a beautiful one in the scriptures, and a confusing one everywhere else. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. Samuel, a boy who has been dedicated by his parents to serve in the temple, is laying down to go to sleep. Three times God calls him. Three times Samuel gets up to go to Eli the priest, whom he was supposed to serve. It's a simple but powerful pattern. God calls. Samuel hears but confuses God's call with a human request. Finally, Eli sets him on the right path. In the scriptures, it's an interesting story of God calling Samuel because of this confusion. Finally, after this scripture reading ends, Samuel responds positively to God's call, and his career as judge and prophet is launched. The same things that make this an interesting story here are the same things that make this so confusing in our world. The story raises a serious question. How do we sort out the call of God from human desires, whether the desires of other people or our own? Throughout history, horrible things have been done by people who believed they were doing God's will. Sometimes Christians have murdered or condemned other people in the belief that God was calling them to do this. The Crusades, the Inquisition, and the KKK are only three organized instances. There are many others, organized and unorganized, that claim Christianity as the basis for their destruction. When I think of these things, and when I think of this question of sorting out the call of God from human desires, I'm reminded of a comic drawn by David Hayward. It depicts Jesus speaking with a group of preachers and teachers. Jesus says, the difference between me and you is you use scripture to determine what love means, and I use love to determine what scripture means. Or, if you prefer a biblical citation, you could point to 1 Corinthians 13, where Paul says that we can have all knowledge and all faith, but if we do not have love for God and love for others, then we are nothing. That doesn't mean that we will be perfect by any means. We will undoubtedly still struggle. 
like Samuel and the midnight call of God. But it means that if we keep the love of God at the center, we will have a guidepost along the way. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is hard to hear your voice in the midst of the loudness and raucousness of this world. Grant that we may remember that you have given us your Son as an example of love for this world, and grant that we may remember this as we seek to follow your call. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.